I definitely have been like going back and pulling things out, like the paintings on the wall behind, above you guys. That's sort of like, those were the last things that were made and they were kind of pulling back into older work that I made these crumpled paintings. And so I was trying to see what would happen if I translated that crumple into uh, ceramics. And I wanted them to sort of set the backdrop of like the American landscape or the, every, the American landscape through a distorted lens or the, the uh, artist gesture of like crumpling a piece that's a failure and um, the idea of the ideal not matching up to reality or something. So that, yeah, I feel like there was like dipping back into old themes and that idea of crumpling up the, there is like in all of your work, the sense of kind of creative destruction yeah. as, as a, a theme. Yeah. Or, because I always think of um, Rauschenberg, Rauschenberg's Erase de Kooning yeah, right. and that idea of the gesture of erasure mm -hmm. as a creative act yeah. and an act of kind of moving forward in history too, like make it, uh, almost like killing your master or something. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I think the idea of like the destruction being an impetus for the new form somehow. But I think the the ceramics seem uh, interesting to explore for me for that reason that it's I'm not like making it and breaking it like the past. No, work. I agree. I think it's incredibly like it's like the creative is the dominant. Yeah, mode like in the this. medium kind of pushes that yeah. to be more dominant. But um, even the form that it takes, you know, it's the the iconography, the content of this work is very much related to, you know, history of American art like your other work, and yet it is a completely different form. You mm -hmm. know, it's like moved beyond just that other, you know, dealing with the tradition and making something really pretty original. Because mm -hmm. right? this is still life, but it's really not still life. Right. It's actually weirdly morphing into some other kind of life. <laughs> Future life. Yeah, and maybe they imply they're going to like act back on you in this uh, protective way. Like we were talking about vag vagina dentata with yeah. those. And so I, I couldn't remember where that came from. I just assumed from Freud. And it's like in a lot of, a lot of cultures, mythology about, and it, they were saying it was possibly to like warn off rape and sexual abuse to like have that fear mm -hmm. they have the elements to kind of protect themselves or fight back or taking on the anxieties but they become like a shield or something or evolve it's like it's or a evolve, kind of a yeah. evolution of natural form and there's such a striking dynamic in terms of like the gendered elements of yeah. the work between what's in this room in the back and what's out front. Yeah. Because we're talking about these being very female in some ways, but also powerful. Powerful. Yeah. Whereas in the front, we have these really male oriented works that we have, you know, George Washington with the yeah. flaccid sword, and <laughs> there is like this fabulousness <laughs> to it. Uh, so that I think that is a really charged. Mm -hmm. element that comes out in the taking the show in, in its entirety, you know, that you might not get just from seeing one piece. So that's right. one of the reasons I was so happy we were able to show everything. Yeah. Yeah. Together. Yeah, and then the last the couple pieces on the plinths were coming out of the watercolors too, like the still life kind of letting the I was letting the clay do more of the work and becoming limp and that the other one is with the color draining out and um, so they felt a little more like funereal or something in the back. And then the apple cores were kind of a side note. Like one of them's supposed to look twisted, like you twist like a dish rag, like thinking about wringing every last <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bit out of the environment and then kind of the stalactite, stalagmite thing again. Can you talk a little bit about picnic body? <laughs> I think that's one of the most intriguing of the watercolors. Um, the more I look at it, the more I see it. Yeah, he's talking about a watercolor that's a picnic blanket with an arrangement of, of what's supposed to be like a rotting picnic in the shape of a body. Mm. 
but um, when I looked at the pictures of the exploding watermelon fields, it looked like pictures from a war field of exploded carnage. And um, so I was thinking about the body exploded, like the Archambold <laughs> body as if it was exploded in war, and um, because still lifes are referencing mortality anyways. So that, that image was sort of thinking about like just using almost like a, the exploded bounty, the bounty just rotting in the shape of a body on the picnic blanket. Well, there's so much of that tension that we talked about before between like whimsy and frivolity mm -hmm. and real violence and horror because mm -hmm. essentially you're looking at a crime scene is the way yeah, like a I crime it, scene. the aftermath of a, you know, um, an act of war. But yet, it's on a picnic blanket, which was supposed to be the, you know, an ultimate symbol of like domestic mm -hmm. happiness and uh, the color. They're all bright through colors. Right. And I think it captures that dichotomy that comes up repeatedly throughout the show. Yeah, the berserk aspect, right? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Thank you so much for coming, listening. It's a great show. Yeah, it was really great. talking. Thank you for yeah, doing this. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, yeah thank you great. so much, all of you.